Last year, Toronto became the first ever city in Canada to have a Michelin Guide, the prestigious global restaurant designation awarded through anonymous dining experiences by Michelin inspectors. So joining us today is Toronto food and travel writer Raymond Kua, who has visited over half of the city's Michelin star restaurants and will be attending the 2023 Michelin Guide ceremony tonight. Raymond, thank you so much for thank joining so much us for here today. Me, Good to see you, Raymond. Oh, I'm sure yeah. many people envy what you do, uh, being <laughs> able to dine out and write food reviews but also just get a chance to try everything the city has to offer. But what has been the impact of, you know, the Michelin Guide coming to Toronto? Oh, it's been really an, an amazing impact on the culinary scene. It brings so much tourism and the restaurants see such a flourish in diners as well. Although there's a negative impact sometimes where because of the demand after the restaurants get into the guide, they mm. need to raise prices as mm. well. Oh. But overall, it's been amazing. People get to learn about these new restaurants they've never tried before. Even myself, like yeah. I was, I learned quite a bit of new restaurants I haven't tried before. Oh. Yeah, it must be fascinating to sort of see all the different styles and, and you know, culinary creations that yeah. come up with here. But, you know, we've been talking about a couple of things this week, Raymond. One is the Michelin Guide, but also the Bib Gourmand uh, designation for some restaurants in the mm -hmm. city as well. Can you help us sort of understand or distinguish the difference there? Yeah, so the Bib Gourmand is more of like, it's not quite a star, but it's above the recommended. So mm. so the, the main purpose of the Bib Gourmand is you know you can get great dining, a two-course dining plus a dessert or a wine. For, for around $60. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, for the price it takes to fill up some vehicles these days, you can be enjoying <laughs> a delicious a meal. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so so it is still a coveted restaurant. doesn't yes. have a star, but mm -hmm. the, the price point is yeah. one of the criteria. So at least, you know, especially in Toronto where the prices right. is kind of rising already uh -huh. with menu, so at least you know uh -huh. that you can eat well for $60. Okay, yeah. and Raymond, has there been any criticism over the past year of, of restaurants that make it to the guide or some restaurants that have been snubbed and haven't been included in the guide? Honestly, there will always be controversy mm -hmm. re revolving the guide. Like, I know when it first came out, like, all of us started discussing, like, like who, who made it, like, why, and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, personally, even myself, I have some agreements, disagreements. Mm -hmm. Everyone would have that. Yeah. Um, but it's, in the end, like, the inspectors do their thing. They've been doing this for years all around the world, so we can just basically trust that they follow a system. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and I, I mean, if everyone sort of had the same palate and same taste, you would expect all the same would come up, but there's always going to be differences of opinion, yeah, particularly yeah. when it comes around food, that's for sure. And, and based on what you've been sampling, are, first of all, do you know what's on the list tonight? Uh, for the stars? For, yeah, for yeah. who's going to no. be okay. you don't know. Everyone's oh, going to okay. find out so at 8 p.m. tonight. Okay, so, so with that in mind there. then, Raymond, do you have a couple of restaurants in the city in mind that you're hoping to see sort of get this recognition this evening? So what's interesting is since they released the 12 new restaurants that's added to the guide, and four are already bib, so technically there's only eight that, that uh, can receive stars or just be recommended. Okay. Okay. Um, everything else from last year is also part to be considered. They may uh, they may yeah. lose stars, they oh, may gain stars. Wow, yeah, you have to keep the yeah. star, right? Like yeah. that's also So so from the eight remaining, for my personal uh -huh. opinion based on who Michelin normally gives stars, the one I'm for me has the highest probability is Caposato based on just who they normally give stars. I've never been there, so I don't okay. know the okay. experience. Capo Sato. Yeah. It's a Japanese it's restaurant? It's a Japanese ah. tasting menu restaurant. And okay. if you look at uh -huh. Michelin's um, usual star restaurants, even in the city, it's mostly tasting menu restaurants. So that for me is, is, is like the best contender right now for yeah. the Michelin star. Um, other potential stars, in, in my opinion, that may get it would be Alder, FK, or, or Mimi Chinese. Yes, yeah. I've been to it's FK because it's right by my house, yeah. Frank's Kitchen. Yeah. Delicious food. Yeah, and I for my FK. birthday. And uh, it's such a hidden gem as well. I feel is. like I'm glad that East Midtown is getting the, mm -hmm. the spotlight. Because totally. <laughs> this last time there was not a lot of Midtown or Uptown yeah. places yeah. as well. And also Alder at the Ace Hotel. Yeah. That's a good one as well that I went for. Absolutely. Okay, so well, thank Raymond, you, Raymond. Kua, I really appreciate this. We're going to wrap mm -hmm. our show up with a bit thank of a you. sort of viewer comment. Because we've been asking all morning about, you know, what you think of and what do you consider before you go to a restaurant. So we've been asking you all morning, uh, and this sums up kind of what we heard a lot of this morning. Yeah, so uh, Iman writes in, when it comes to choosing a restaurant, it's all about the entire experience for me. I need good, flavorful food, something I can't make at home. 
The atmosphere needs to be inviting, yet semi-private, in order for me to enjoy the company I'm with. And the location is important, but not the main factor. P.S. It helps a lot when it's not overpriced. So I think that kind of sums up a lot of what we've been hearing from viewers this morning, right? What do you think, Raymond? What do you look for when you dine in at a restaurant? Yeah, it's it's very similar mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Usually for me, it's like. What can I try here that I can't try anywhere else? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's really the uniqueness and the personality of the restaurant yeah. that needs to shine. Yeah, and service, is that, would do Michelin, uh, when they consider a restaurant, do they look at service as well? Or um, not really? I feel like... It's more about for, the food, right? Well, I feel like service starts to matter more once you get into the stars mm -hmm. or recommended in ah, bib, it's okay. a little less. Okay. But consistency is, is very important to yeah. them, so... Okay. So basically, do repeat visits in the restaurant, yeah. so it needs to always have a similar experience each time. We'll find yeah. out tonight, and you will be there as well. Raymond, thanks for joining us there. this morning on thanks Breakfast. So much, do appreciate Raymond. it. Yeah, Such a yeah. pleasure. Michelin blue. blue. Ah. Oh, very good. Very appropriate. Okay. <laughs> oh, All right. Very and of course,